What's up, everybody? Axe Wizard here, uh, back with a pretty big update for my game. I've redone a lot of the art. So, if you see my things done since last episode, I ditched AI art. I decided to make my own. So I made, actually now I made 11 ships uh, for the Synthocracy, the Harmonious Synthocracy faction. I redid the weapons. Uh, I redid the background a little bit. I, re I redid my particle effects. Even though those weren't AI generated, I just did it to match the art style. And I also redid the uh, title screen, which is just temporary. It's just a screenshot of the uh, game now until I get something working for the real one. And then I also set up version control, which I'm going to I'm gonna do a whole separate video on that at some point. So I actually have all of my code on GitHub now all of my assets and everything so uh yeah that's so now if my computer burns down um i won't lose the uh, game so that's cool so let's talk about let's just run the game so right away you can see pretty big difference uh i drew all this art myself so this is my little shuttle here with a obnoxiously huge gun on on the front of it <laughs> uh but yeah so here we go we got some carriers and stuff attacking you can see the little particle effects that looks awesome but yeah same game it's just that i redid all the art uh i'm using a uh, tileable space background i got off of open game art which is uh, license CC0, the common zero, so I don't even have to give uh, attribution, it's just there. But I'm gonna compile where I got all these assets from uh, and put them in a, a file eventually, so that way when I release the game, I can actually credit everybody whose art I've used, regardless of, it, of if they ask for it or not. So. Yeah, I'm still using the uh, same shield effect because I paid eight bucks for that, so I'm, I'm, I'm licensed to use that as well. And I think it looks great still. But yeah, you can see lots of lots of stuff going down here, man. Um, so let's talk about the art changes. So I've been generating art, and this, these are one of the earliest ships that I I rigged up. And this, this ship looks great. I think this looks really cool. It's futuristic. It's kind of hard to tell what's going on there. It looks like a kind of alien or something like that. Like, it looks high-tech. But I don't know where this art came from because it was generated uh, using Midjourney. I'm willing to bet that the artist probably doesn't want their work being butchered like this. <laughs> so what I've decided to do is I've decided to stop using AI generated art, even though it would fit the the theme of this game, which is set in the future where AI has taken over and humanity is on the brink of collapse. Um, <laughs> I don't want to be part of the problem, you know? So I'm making that change. So I was looking at my, what are my, what were my options? So I could do the art myself, which I'm not a very good artist. Um, I could hire somebody to do it which could be pretty pricey. So I started I started looking on Fiverr to see what artists were and the artists who's, uh, who, uh, whose artwork I liked, um, I didn't really feel, feel, I didn't really want to pay 20 to $60 per piece of art, you know? So, you know, for, for a bunch of ships, like for this faction alone, I've already got like 11 or 12 ships planned out. That's, uh, that's a lot of money. So, you know, that's, uh, that's like 600 bucks for 12 ships or whatever. Uh, I don't want to drop that kind of money because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not making this game because I'm a business. I'm making this game for fun. And even though I, yes, I do plan to monetize this game when, when, it, when it's released, I'm not going to do any microtransactions. Don't worry. I'll get into monet, uh, monetization when, uh, it gets a lot closer to, to creation. But, um, yeah, I don't I don't expect to make money off of this. I don't expect to be able to like, oh yeah, I'm a game studio, Axe Wizard Games, baby. I have no expectation of that. I just want to make a game and put it out there in the world and I want to make a game that I enjoy and if other, if other people enjoy it too, awesome. So couldn't really hire somebody um cuz that would uh, that would burn a lot of the limited disposable income I have currently. So that's not an option. 
I could do it myself, which is what you see here. <laughs> um, so I, I, I did that. So let me walk you through the process of how I started on this. So the, I was trying to decide. So, so after I decided I was going to do the art myself, I was looking around trying to figure out what style I should do. Um, to make it look actually interesting and appealing. And one of my, probably one of my all time favorite styles I've, I've ever seen is darkest dungeon. So like, I absolutely love the art style to this game, how it's just super dark and brooding and, um, yeah, like this, so let's open this image in a new tab. So like this just looks really cool to me. Like this looks awesome. I love this style. And it seems to me like the style really tends to focus on really heavy, thick brush strokes. So I was like, okay, I could probably do that. But I'm not sure how to really get like, you know, the uh the the finer details in there. So I was talking with with one of my best buddies who goes by Necrobomicon on the internet. And he gave me some great advice. He says, look, you could probably just do like the a black and white, uh, you know, hand-drawn image. And then, you know, you could take out uh, all the uh, all the, the background. And what you can do is you can use like metal textures to, to give it this sort of texture. And you can color it um, with these metal textures. And that would give you... Uh, a pretty good start on this so i was like okay yeah that that makes a lot of sense so he set me up with a program called krita which is a free program like you don't have to buy it at all and apparently it's rivals like it rivals photoshop so what i do what, what i do with my process is i start a new file i just use a lot of the uh, defaults here so it's rgb alpha for the model 8-bit integer channel for the, the depth and then whatever this default profile is for it. I set it to be a thousand by a thousand pixels for the width just because that gives me enough space to play around in. And then what I do is I draw the art myself. Now I do have an actual like a, a cheap drawing tablet that I can hook up with USB to my computer and I could probably even just draw in this program um, with the various brushes and stuff that it, it offers, but, um, I can't find the pen to my little drawing tablet. So I fell back on this, which is not an option that I would, I, I would recommend. This is the remarkable two, uh, tablet, which is way overpriced. Um, I bought this years ago when I had a big fatty bonus at work one year and I found myself going through lots of different notebooks. And so having a, a writing tablet that kind of felt like paper and I could have everything in, in one digital spot and I could email it to myself was pretty attractive. Um, it don't, don't get me wrong. This is dead useful. I use it all the time. I just don't think it's worth like the 650, um, bucks or like whatever it was uh for for this damn tablet so i'm not saying use use a a remarkable tablet because they're really good for art no this is just what i got if i could find my pen i'd be using uh, my little cheap like 40 50 dollar art tablet i got off amazon a few years ago just plugged into my computer and i, I would be on, on here on krita directly but i'm not so what i do is i draw them on my tablet and then uh, this, this lets me email them to myself. So I email them and then I download them on this computer. And then what I do is we go to my downloads. Yeah, so you can see I've got one here that I, I drew of, you know, some uh, asteroids that I was gonna add in the game. I also was messing around with some particle effects. So this one here is the one I actually used to replace my uh, particle effects in the game. And I drew these ships. I I've already done this one. I'm not too happy with how it looks in the game. So um, I think I've done this one, but I'm gonna walk you through, I'm gonna redo it because it it's kind of crooked. So what I do is I screenshot it and then 
I save it. And there's probably a, a way wi within Krita where I can remove the uh, background. I just don't know how to do it yet. So I've just been using good old remove.bg, which is a website where you can go to remove backgrounds for stuff. So I'm going to go here and in my light shot folder, I'm going to get this one. Remove the background. There we go. Download. And then once I've got that, I'm going to go back into Krita. And this whole workflow, like I had to have my buddy like hold my hand and like walk me through it. So I'm not really familiar with this software yet. It's super powerful, but I go and I import export, I import layer, and I'm going to bring this ship in as well as some of these other metal textures that I've got. Now, a lot of these textures I've gotten off of like open game art. Um, uh, almost all of these are CC zero. Um, some of these I just got off like the internet. Like uh, there was like this texture website that you can just download them and use them. So I was like, okay, cool. Uh, so I'm gonna use this one. This one's pretty good. I, I like this one. I like this one and this one's good too. So I'm gonna use these. These are these these are the ones I've primarily been using for all my synthocracy ships. So I can get like other textures and stuff. So I think that my uh, when I get to my my human faction, they're gonna have a lot more beat down ships, so they're gonna have like a lot more rusted uh, looks. So I'm I'm gearing up for that. So I load all those in, and oh I I I, I forgot to load in my uh, <laughs> my actual ship, and we're gonna load that in as a layer as well. There we go. So we we've got this in here now. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna use this uh, transform tool and I'm gonna see if I can't rotate this uh, a little bit so that way it's straighter. Uh, that kind of looks straight to me. The the wings like look like they're they're still tilted but the, the, the ship itself looks straight. So I'm gonna go with that, that looks fine to me. And so now what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this to the other layers. I'm going to take this layer, I'm going to select it. I'm actually going to uh, move this. Uh, let me move it. Here we go. I'm going to hold shift. That way it's straight. There we go. And to make sure it covers the whole thing, I'm going to hold shift. That way it keeps it uh, the same aspect ratio. There we go. So that covers up the, the, the whole thing. So I'm going to go do that with all these uh, textures here. So this one, I'm going to rotate again. Make it so it covers it. This next one, I'm also going to rotate this one. And make sure, I think this will cover the, the whole ship by default. Yes, it will. And then I just all, all, all I have to do is just rotate this last one and then we're, we're we're good to go. There we go. Cool. So now that, now that I have all those textures underneath this uh, this 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 black outline that I made, um, what we have to do is we have to add a, a transparency mask to every one of these layers. So if I hit F for my fill tool, I'm gonna right click and select uh, yeah, black. There we go. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to right click the, the layer. I'm going to add transparency mask, which is going to create this uh, sub layer. I'm going to dye that black, which uh, hides it. So black means it's transparent. White means it's not transparent. So I'm going to, I'm going to add this transparency mask for every layer. Add transparency mask. Boom. Add and add there we go so now I'm, I'm gonna hit b for brush i'm just using the uh the basic the the, the basic one brush in krita if you try to use a a, a fancier brush it, it, it won't work with the uh, transparency mask so i'm going to switch back to white and then now what we do is we just zoom in and say, for example, if I want to use this uh, this texture here, which I which I use for all of my my like cockpit windows and stuff like that, um, I can just go here and I can just color, and it becomes like I it, it becomes like a digital coloring book, except instead of crayons, you're using these textures. So that's how I've been making all this art, and I think it looks pretty sweet. So let me go and 
This is the one I'm going to use for the bulk of this ship. So I'm going to color this in. I'm going to do this here as well. There we go. For this little section, I kind of want this to be one of the uh, one of the the dark. So I'm going to do this. Uh, I went outside the lines a little bit. I need to reduce my uh, brush size. Here we go. There we go. And then I'm going to go back to... So I'm, I'm making sure that I'm on the uh, uh, transparency mask. Because if I'm not on the, the transparency mask, I'm just modifying the actual image, which is not what we want. We want to modify the, the transparency mask. So did that. Let's crank this up a little bit. We can f make this one also that same metal, uh, which should... I'll get that in a second. Da -da. I guess I can get that here. It doesn't matter. This is going to be the same color anyway. Okay. And then we'll, what we can do is... Hmm. I'm thinking that this would be cool to also do this and uh, around the uh, cockpit area. And then just come down. There we go. So I think that looks pretty good. And then let's... Uh, Let's also do, hmm. let's do this as the same color too. There we go. And then let's do, let's do this texture here for this. And then what I was also thinking is I could do it down here for this part. Which gives it like a slightly different look. So kind of cool. And I don't think that, that looks too too startling to have this be, be different. So I like that. I also like the idea of having these corner edges here be that same texture. And I think now we'll do some of the darker ones. So I'm thinking that, let me reduce this a little bit more. I'm thinking that right around here and this can be pretty dark. And then I'm gonna have this be the really dark texture. Here we go. I think I think that, that that looks all right. And then let's go back to the basic one for these thrusters. There we go. And I think I think we'll use for the wings. I might just use this. Uh, let me get this corner here that I missed earlier. Might just use this this texture as well. So let me get the corners, and I'll crank up the brush size a little bit. Yeah, I think this looks pretty good. And there you go. We basically colored a uh, a ship. And I think it looks okay. I need to do it for here too. Oops, that's that's out of bounds. And 
have to reduce the brush size. There we go. So now we got a ship that, that looks pretty darn cool. I like the way it looks. I don't know if I necessarily like this part though. I wonder if I should just make this uh, the same color or this the same texture. So we'll just go over it. Yeah, I think that looks a lot better. I'm pretty happy with how that looks. So now we have another ship that's pretty much ready to go. And then, so now, again, with Krita, I should be able to just, like, remove the uh, background and then uh, export it. But, like, it, it, like, exports, like, everything. Like, so it exports, like, the, the, the whole image. So I have to edit it anyway. So what I've been doing is i just been, uh, i just been leaving it on there. And then I just been again screenshotting it, going back to uh, remove background, <laughs> and so I'll save it. Let's go back to our remove BG. Drop it in here. Now we got the new uh, art with the background removed. And then what I do here is uh, another thing that I do, I could probably also rotate it in Krita. Again, I should be able to do everything in Krita. I just, I'm not familiar enough with it yet. And I just don't have the patience to learn that huge ass software. So I've just been going to my photo editor that I've, that I've been using forever for uh, making all my, my, my video thumbnails. And so if I get this here, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate it. So we'll flop it that way. Because I want everything facing to the right for, for my game. And I don't need to really make any other tweaks to it. I think it looks okay. So I'm just going to save it. As SPR. Synthocracy. And what should I call this one? So I'll say this is a Synthocracy Battle Frigate. Because this is sort of based off of uh, one of the uh, smaller ones that it was called Synthocracy Frigate. So I'll just call it uh, Synthocracy Battle Frigate. And I will save. Bam. So now that I've got that, I can uh, go into my downloads. And I, I now have this here. And I can bring up the, the directory that I have all my sprites in uh, Godot. And I just drag this bad boy over. There, I have a battle frigate. And if I go back into Godot, it, it imports it. So now, all I do now is I just, uh, I still have like the, uh, I still have ship 12 and ship 13 that I haven't done yet. So let me bust open ship 12. So you can see here, I've got this, uh, this really crappy uh, AI art thing to replace still. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the Area 2D and Collision Mask and the Shield. Uh, I'm also going to hide the, the Sprite too. I'm going to move all the thrusters and weapons out of the way. So I can get this uh, new Sprite in here. And then this just has like eight uh, light turrets on it currently. So I can swap these out as needed. Okay, now that I have those out of the way, I just go back to this sprite, and then for the texture, I just go into my sprites here. So I have Battle Frigate. Look at this, Chad. Heck yeah. I just drag this bad boy over the texture property. There we go. So now, I'm going to start tweaking things. So I think these thrusters uh, just go right there. That should fit fine. I think I might, I'm going to put this little thruster here and I might duplicate this. So left rear thruster one, if I just hit duplicate, it makes left rear thruster two, which works for all my, my, my thruster code. So I might move that right there and I'm going to take this one, move this right here. Uh, I, I don't think I'm going to duplicate the uh, front ones. I think these are fine. 
I'm going to move the rear thruster to be about right here. I'm going to duplicate that one. I'm going to move that one like right here. There we go. So now we've got that. So next, I typically like to do my uh, collision shape. So if we go to the mask here, I'm going to modify this to fit uh, I'm going to get rid of some of these indices here. I don't need this uh, complex of a shape for this one. So I'm going to get rid of this and this. So I'm going to start with this. So I'm going to drag this over here. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do this here. So drag this here, drag this here. Click another spot on the line here to make another index. And then I'm just gonna make a rough collision shape that this ship should use. There you go. So if a bullet hits anything in this uh, shape here, it's gonna fire the uh, collision and the ship's gonna take damage. So I think that's that's close enough. And so now that, now that I've got that, I'm also gonna show the shield sprite. I'm gonna make sure that the shield sprite can actually fit in so i i'm holding shift while i'm resizing this that way it doesn't uh it doesn't lose uh it, it keeps its uh one-to-one -one aspect ratio and there you go so that should fit inside the uh, shield now so i'm going to hide the shield and the collision shape and now we're going to go through and we're going to add weapons so since this is a pretty large ship, it should have, I think at the very least, it should have three turrets. So these weapon slots are all light turrets. So I'm just going to drag these to where I think that they should go. And I think this will work here. And let's see. So... Uh, it should also have some light uh, cannons. So I'm going to go down to my weapon scene. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch this to be a light cannon. And I'm going to move... Actually, you know what? No. I'm going to make this a medium cannon because this is a pretty big ship. So I'm going to say it's a uh, slot type medium. I'm going to drag in medium cannon. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this right here. And then this one I'm also going to make medium. I need to switch this to a drop down like I did for my other stuff. But I'll get to that soon. Drag over medium cannon. Put that right there. And then I think... I think I'm going to make this one... I'm going to make this one uh, medium as well. I'm going to put a missile launcher on this one. I'm going to put this right here. And this one, I'm also going to make a missile launcher. Boom. I'm going to put that on the other wing over here. And then I'm going to do, I'm going to just do two more medium cannons. So I'm going to do medium. I'm going to drag over medium cannon. I'm gonna duplicate this uh, weapon slot, which is smart. It makes weapon slot nine for me as opposed to weapon slot four, which is already taken. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put these on the other wings here. There. So I've got three turrets on this thing, and four medium cannons and two missile launchers. I think that's a pretty good weapons array for this bad boy. So I'm gonna. Reshow this, reshow that. I'm gonna save it. Now I'm gonna go back up here and I'm gonna change the uh, the variables of it. So description. This is gonna be a synthocracy vessel. So it's gonna be synthocracy uh, heavy frigate. I, I I think I called it battle frigate, but whatever. Heavy frigate. There you go. Acceleration speed. It's not gonna be that slow. It's gonna be pretty slow. Uh, turn speed. This should this should be quite a bit quicker. I'm gonna make this that max speed should be 
I'll say 290. Uh, HP and shields look good. Attack range, since it's a, a larger ship, I'm going to make it have a longer attack range. Cargo space, I'll set it to be 500. Because <clears throat> it's not necessarily a freighter. And then for the ship class, I'm going to make it a cruiser. There we go. So save. So now, now that we have ship 12 done, if I go into my main scene here, and I'm going to uncomment ship 12. Eventually, I'm not going to have these preloaded. I'm going to, again, this is just testing code. So I'm going to have these loaded on demand rather than, rather than preloaded. But for now, I got them preloaded. And then for my little testing ship function, I just have the uh, array of ships that I want to use. So I'll save that. And then if I want to test it myself in my setup space scene right now, I'm just specifying what type of ship I want my player to use. So I'm going to be using ship, what, 11, I think it was, or 12? Ship 12, save. So now if I run the game, I should be able to play this uh, this big frigate. Look at this guy. This, thing's, this thing is massive. Yeah, I think it looks great. This is awesome. This looks amazing. Heck yeah, man. Look at that. I just added this big ship in here. I think it needs faster acceleration speed, though. So I'm going to go look at what other big ships I have in my arsenal here. So I think ship 6 is my biggest one. And the acceleration speed on this is 0.8. And I got 0.4. So I think I'm going to put 1 for this. So I think that's a pretty happy medium. So save. Run it now. There we go. That feels like I'm actually going somewhere. So I'm not attacking anybody right now because I'm not enemies with anyone, but I think it looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. This looks amazing. Yeah, man. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, this. Oh, this, 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 this looks so cool. And I made this. <laughs> so that's how I do the art for my game. So, yeah, I still got some work to do. So you might notice I still have the AI art generated mini map. Um, so I'm still working on phasing that out. And come on, I, I'm, am I not close enough to this planet yet? And when I land, I still have to do my own art for this. So I'm still phasing that art out as well. And also for, for my trade goods, these are also using AI generated art. So I'm working on swapping that out. And I think there's also a way that like I can make my own custom buttons and stuff with like hand drawn art. So I'm going to try to figure that out too. But yeah, that's all on the uh, list, but I'm pretty happy with, with how this is turning out. This is a, this is a big ship, man. <laughs> but yeah, this is so cool. I love how this all looks. This looks so cool. You know, I'm going to... Not, not the moon. I'm going to attack this guy. Yeah, what? You want a piece of me? Guess what? I'm lighting you up. You can't. You can't handle my power. Oh, crap. I'm dying. <laughs> no. I'm, I was kidding. I'm sorry. You got so many more missiles than I do. I'm out. Later, dork. <laughs> oh, he's still shooting me. Oh, I died. <laughs> But yeah, so that's uh, that's my workflow for making art right now, and I think it I should be able to do everything in Krita. I just need to get more practice at it. Um, but yeah, I I think it looks pretty good, and I like the art style. I like uh, it. It doesn't look exactly like Darkest Dungeon, um, but I think it looks pretty darn good though like this looks pretty awesome i think this is uh because it's got like all this these textures just just it's kind of like stained glass uh in a way except spaceships i think that's super cool so that's my current process i have to um i've got many uh, mini map markers and stuff drawn out so i have to swap out those markers and then i have to figure out what i'm going to do for the actual you know sphere thing so i gotta figure that out but uh yeah 
I am loving this. This is super cool. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think. And if you have any art tips uh, to improve this workflow, I would be glad to hear it. And I'm also not sure how I'm going to handle um, like scenes and stuff like that. So what I mean, like uh, when I when I land, it shows that image that's supposed to represent like the location you're at. So I have to figure out how to draw like these uh, artwork for Earth and uh, stuff like that. So I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do for that. I think I might just look at some artwork for inspiration, or maybe even um, AI art generate some stuff, and then just kind of try to recreate it with uh, my art style and see if that'll work. I don't know. I'm gonna be looking for some more textures and stuff too, because when I I need to figure out how to color the uh, textures better as well. So. When I start on other factions, um, they're not all going to be this silvery metal uh, like the uh, Synthocracy. They're uh, they're going to be different. So especially like for my alien races, those are going to be very different. So I gotta I gotta figure those out. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it, and uh, I will have a version control video coming out as a separate non-dev log video, more of a guide to set it up for Godot because it's not as streamlined as I thought it would be. And after looking at it, the process seems pretty similar for, for Godot 4. So I'm going to make a video on setting that up. So look forward to that. Thank you so much for watching.